Hi class. Um, so this is the uh, second part of our lecture for week seven on the user interface. Um, in the first part, I just did a kind of generic example of how, to, how the user interface works. Um, in this part, we're going to add some user interface elements into our actual project. Um, so I'm going to get started. Uh, I'm not going to spend too much time on the setup because we've kind of talked about that, but um, I, you can look in earlier videos for um, a more in-depth setup, and I'm also planning to, when I have a little bit of time, uh, just record some simple videos for how to use GitHub, um, Sublime Text, and some of the other software that we're using. Um, so I'm just going to start by opening up uh, GitHub and go to MMP310, make sure I'm up to date. Um, and so uh, I can go from here and go to Show and Finder and see all the projects. So there's the DOM project that I did last time. Um, for this project, I'm actually going to start where I left off with the, the class example. I'll be adding the user interface to this example. So I'm going to duplicate that project. Um, so I'll, on the Mac, I can just hit Command D. Uh, on Windows, I could uh, right click and do um, copy and then paste. Um, so let's call this one, uh, I'll just call this user interface. Um, and then let's open this up in Sublime. So I could, um, you know, drag my MMP310 to Sublime. That's one way to do it. I can also go from GitHub. I can go to Repository, open in Sublime Text. Um, and so I'm going to add a link first. So in my main page for MMP310, um, here's the last example that I added. I'm going to go here, make a new line, and add in a new link. So I'll do a List item, anchor tag, uh, href for this one is user underscore interface. And then I'll put that as the link, interface. And then close the anchor tag and close the list item. Um, so I think I left the Sublime server on. No, I didn't. So let's start the Sublime server. And so then I'll open up localhost 8080. And there's my... Sublime Server, MMP310, and my link to the user interface. So this obviously looks like my scene um, from the uh, class assignment. Um, and so what I'm going to do is add in a couple uh, interface elements that will um, kind of let the user make some adjustments to the scene. Um, and I'm just going to give a couple different examples for this and how you have to use variables. Um, and so then I'm going to let you guys uh, in your assignment, come up with some other ways to change the scene. Um, so let's start out uh, by doing something really simple. I'm just going to change the color of the background. Um, and so I'm going to have to add some variables for this, um, but it'll let me kind of give the user a little control over maybe a bit of the mood of the scene. Um, so this will be a really simple one. So uh, I'm going to close out index.html for the landing page, go to user interface, and I'm going to open up style.css because like we saw in our last uh, example, um, we're going to have to style our elements as we add them. Uh, and then I'm going to open up sketch.js. Um, and so I'm going to change the title up here. So this is just going to be user interface. And we're making this on the 24th. Um, and actually, let's update index.html as well. So the title in here, we'll just call this user interface. OK. Um, and so if we want to control something in the scene, we're going to need to have a variable that we can control with our slider um, or a button if we're using a button. So um, we have a bunch of code here. But the first thing I'm going to focus on is just changing the color of the sky. So light blue is just a, a, a color value. We can't actually, it's not a number that we can change with a variable. Um, and so what I need is like a number or something that I can't actually adjust. So I'm going to remember that this is light blue. I'll use that as a starting point. So I'm just going to put a, a value light blue right here. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the HSB uh, numbers for that value. Um, if you haven't done HSB before, uh, HSB is basically using our color wheel um, as like an example of uh, you know how to pick a color 
Okay, here we go, HSL. So sometimes it's called HSL. So in HSL, you have a hue. So you can see this first slider is the hue. Um, and the hue is just what color it is. So it starts at red, yellow, green, blue, pink, back to red. That's the hue. Then to make other lighter or darker colors, you can use the saturation. So how much color do you see? So no saturation is going to be gray. Full saturation is going to be red. And then the lightness, sometimes the brightness. So uh, if it's fully light or bright, it's going to be white. And then if it's black, you know, it's going to be black. So um, we can combine these values to create different colors. Um, and so I can actually just look up, you know, light blue, uh, HTML color, HSB. Okay, I'm just going to go to my normal HTML color codes. Pretty sure they have it. Yeah, they have HSL, so that's what I need. Um, so I'm going to go to names and go to blue. And let's find light blue. Light blue. So, oh, and it doesn't even have, okay, it doesn't tell me the HSV. Oh, okay, here it is. So that's light blue, I clicked on it. Here's the HSL, I'm just gonna copy that and paste it in here. And we can actually do HSL in uh, P5. It's one of the color modes. So if I go to p5js.org, the default is RGB. Um, but if we go to color and look at color mode, we can actually set it to HSB. And then we can set the number here is like the range of color. Um, so to match the percentage, we probably want to use 360 there. Um, yeah. And the other ones will uh be 100 and 100 so let's try that so before we do this color let's say color mode is 360 100 100 and then let's try plugging that in and see if we get the same color so 195 53 79 okay that is not the right color um, HSL 195. Oh, actually, I forgot to put the actual HSB argument at the beginning. So now let's see. There we go. Uh, it's not exactly right, but close enough. Um, so let's take this hue and let's turn that into, uh, or our hue here. That's the light blue hue. Let's turn that into a variable. So uh, I'm just going to go up into my global variables. And I'm going to say uh, variable BG color. So our background color. Actually, this is our sky color. So let's say sky color. And the hue is 195. Um, actually, you know what is even more accurate is sky hue. Okay, so let's put in sky hue here. Okay, that looks the same. Now we can actually change it with a slider. Um, so let's make a slider here. We'll say variable hue slider. So as we learned in the last lesson, we definitely need to declare this in the global scope. Um, so that's our variable hue slider. So then in our setup function, I'm just gonna collapse these guys. So after we make all of our stuff, let's make a new um, scene. So let's say, uh, or sorry, our user interface. So user interface. Um, so our hue, our sky, what did I call this? Hue slider? Yeah. So that's going to be a create slider. Um, so let's say you could change this to kind of restrict the range of colors if you want to stick in like, you know, um, a specific area of your color wheel. Um, but for now, let's just say it's 0 to 360. And the, the starting value is um, sky hue. So that's where it starts out. Um, and so then let's position our hue slider. So we'll say hue slider dot position. Um, we can put it in the upper right hand corner. So I'll say 10, 10. Uh, and then we'll just say hue slider dot input. And then that's where we put our function to actually change the hue. Um, so I'll just say update hue. 
So I have to create a new function for that. I'll say function update hue. And then I'll just say um, sky hue gets uh, hue slider dot value. And I don't have to uh, then call, like before we had to call the pattern function, I don't have to do that here um, because the draw function is just always going. So it'll, as soon as we change this value, then we'll see the background change. So let's refresh and see if we got that to work. Yeah, so we can see we can actually change the color of the sky. And so that looks pretty cool. I'm actually going to restrict the range because once we get kind of into this orangey yellow territory, actually, that's kind of interesting. But the problem is if we are scrolling back and forth really fast, it just kind of looks crazy. If we restrict the range a bit, so like if we're starting here and we say we can only go down to here, maybe like 20 or something. So I'll say sky hue is actually the max and maybe the minimum is like 10. Then we can restrict the range a bit. Okay, so then we get different effects. Um, so you can kind of play with that however you want. Um, but it might be nice to kind of um, add a specific range that you're looking for. Um, so let's add a label to that real quick. We don't want it to just be sitting there with no context. So let's say variable hue label. And this is um, create element label. And let's just say uh, change the sky. And then let's say hue label dot position is 10, 10. And then we'll just move the slider down a little bit. So we'll say this is 10, 20 or 10, 40 or 10, 30. And then let's style this because it looks pretty stupid um, with just the default style. So I'm going to use the generic label tag. Um, we can see in our elements that this is actually this label right here, and this is this input right here. Um, so let's take our label tag, uh, and let's say um, the uh, font family is, let's just choose something that kind of goes along with the game aesthetic, maybe like uh, mono space. Or actually, you know what's even better is Monaco. Yeah, although that doesn't always work on on uh, Windows. Anyway, let's let's change the color just to match one of our other colors. Maybe um, what is this color? It's like midnight blue. Okay, so that looks pretty good. So then, if we if we move this slider, then we can see the sky changing colors. Okay, so that's pretty cool. That's one way we can kind of adjust the user interface, um, just using one value. Um, so that's one example. There's a lot of other things that we could change here. Anything that's like a number you can change, so like the number of clouds, the position of the clouds, you know, the number of fish, uh, the number of trees. Um, but one thing that I want to point out is that since we're working with like these lists of data, like the list of clouds, the list of trees, the list of fish, if we want to change those things, we're going to actually have to go through all of those elements and update them. Um, so it's a little more complicated than just changing one number, like the background of the sky. So I'm going to do a couple examples with that. Okay, so what if I wanted to change the speed of the fish? Um, that's a variable that is different for each fish. So if we look at fish.js, when it makes the speed, there's kind of a random min and a random number max. Um, and then there's a y speed here. Um, and so there's three numbers that are all kind of hard coded. Um, and what we'd have to do is we'd have to update those numbers. So we'd have to change the x speed and change the y speed, but also change the range of what they can be. Um, so it's a little more complicated. There's a couple more steps, um, but I think we can do it pretty quickly. So I'm going to actually go into split view since we're working with a class here. Um, so here's my fish class and here's my global variables. I'm going to put a comment here to say interface values. So that's what we're changing. So our fish X has a random two and a random four. Um, that's the minimum and maximum. So I'm going to say the uh, fish min speed is two, and the fish max speed is four. Okay, so then if I plug these guys in here, 
fish min speed and fish max speed. Um, so now then when I create the fish, uh, it'll be dependent on these values. Um, and then we can also reset those values uh, with a function. Um, so let's add in another slider. Um, and I'm actually going to have to make this a global slider as well. So let's call this fish speed slider. Okay, and so our fish speed slider, we're going to create a new slider. Um, the min value, let's say, is 2, uh, or let's say 1, so we can go slower. And the max value, let's say, is 10. Uh, and the current value, let's stick with this min speed. So we'll say fish uh, min speed. Um, it's getting a little too small. Um, hopefully that's still visible. Okay, so then we'll say fish speed slider dot position. And let's put it near the hue slider, but over a bit. So let's say um, we'll move it over to like 130 on the Y. And then fish speed slider, we'll give it an input function. So we'll say input, and then we'll say update fish speed. And we'll create that function in a moment. Let's create our label as well. So we'll say fish uh, speed label is create element uh, label. And let's say uh, update, or let's say change fish speed. And then we'll say fish speed label uh, dot position is, let's say, 110. OK, we're a little too close. So let's say 140 for these two x values. We're still pretty close. All right, let's try 180. Okay, um, but I have an error. Update fish speed is not defined. So let's make update fish speed. So I'll say function update fish speed. And so now we can set those values, the min and max. So let's say, so we'll change the fish min speed first. So we'll say fish min speed. And we'll set that to the value of the slider. So fish speed slider dot value. Uh, and then I'll set the max to twice that. So fish min speed, um, fish max speed is fish min speed times two. So that's our range, but we're going to use some randomness in there. So the fishes will be different. So we have to loop over the fish, just like we do when we draw them down here, uh, or we create them in update. So I'm just going to copy that loop. Um, so we have four, let i equal zero. i is less than the number of fish. So we count through our little fish list, um, which we can see here. Um, and we don't want to draw them again or update it again. We're already doing that. We just want to change their speed. So we're going to take each fish, so the fish at the index i, and we're going to update the x speed is equal to, we're still going to use random, um, but now we have our fish min speed is updated and our fish max speed is updated. So let's give that a try. So if we move it down, they seem to slow. And if we go up, they get faster and faster. Um, so that's pretty good. So our user has a little bit of control over the scene. We can slow the fish down, we can speed them up. Okay, so that's another aspect of the scene we can update. So I'm going to do one more, um, and uh, then I'll be done. Um, and so hopefully what you guys want to do is not, uh, you don't have to recreate exactly what I'm doing, but you can think about um, how I'm, uh, you know, what I'm updating, and then think about other numbers in the scene that you could use to update. Um, so the next thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to increase the size of the beach. Um, so that one's actually pretty tricky. I have to, there's a few different numbers that go into that. So I'm going to go over that, create the variables, and then add the slider. Um, so 
we have to look at where the beach actually starts and ends. Here's the beach. Um, it starts at height over two, and it ends at height over. It's as it ends at the bottom of the screen. So it starts at height over two, which is right here, and it draws all the way down to the bottom of the screen. But then the ocean is on top of it. So there's two ways that we can make the beach bigger. We can move the height of the beach up, or we can move the ocean down. Um, so moving the height of the beach up is easier because uh, we just move this value here and move the trees here. Um, moving the ocean down is pretty hard because we have all these fish. So let's just try moving the beach up first, uh, and then we can also try moving the ocean down. Um, so that would just be changing this number. So let's add a variable for that first. Um, so let's say var uh, beach y. And we'll set that to uh, height over two. Although we can't reference height over two up here, so we'll just set that in the setup function. So we'll say beach y equals height over two. Our code is getting pretty complicated at this point, which is a good thing for having our classes. Um, so that, actually, let me close this fish class and just go back to our single view. So beach y is height over two. Um, and then let's place that in here for the top of the beach, height over two. And so if we wanted to make the beach bigger, we could just add a slider for that. So after beach Y, let's add a var beach slider. And so let's say, uh, let's add a label first. So beach label, let's just say create element and it's a label, and I'm just gonna put beach here so you can discover what it does when you click on it. Uh, and so the beach label dot position, let's move it a bit farther over. So let's say, let's try 310. So same as the fish label, but just moving the X value over more. Uh, and then we have our slider, so the beach slider is a create slider. Um, so we don't want to go all the way to the top of the page. That's probably too much beach. Um, so let's just say like 100. And then the max value uh, we'll say is um, our uh, current value, um, which is beach y. And then uh, our current value is also beach y. So then the beach slider position, uh, so we'll use the same X and we'll move it down on the Y. And then we'll add in our input. So we'll say beach slider dot input. Um, let's say update beach. And so then I'll just add this function into my other interface function. So function update beach. Um, so we'll say beach y gets a beach slider dot value. And so that should move our beach up and down. Oh, we got a reference. I misspelled something right here. OK, we got to move over a bit further. I'll try 340. even a little further, 360. Okay, so if we move our beach, uh -oh. Okay, so then I have to, of course, put in that beach Y into the rectangle that I'm using to draw the beach. Okay, so there we get more beach. At a certain point, we kind of get to where we can see the bottom of the beach. So we can fix that. Uh, we could do some fancy calculations to figure out exactly how high the beach needs to be to go down to the ocean. Or we can just say, you know what, the beach is never going to be taller than the height of the screen. So let's just use height here. Um, since the ocean is in front of the beach, we don't have to worry about the beach covering up the ocean. OK, so we have the beach. We can make it bigger. We can also make it smaller. 
um, but then their trees don't really move. So if we want to move the trees, then we'd have to loop through our trees. We have this list of trees and we can update the Y value based on the new beach. Um, so the original Y value for our trees, if we look in um, our setup function, when we create the trees, here's our for loop for num trees. So the Y value is height over three uh, to height over two. But that height over two now can actually be replaced with beach Y. So you can see how our values start to replace different parts of our program. So now our trees up here, um, well, actually, that doesn't really work. Oh, because I haven't actually set beach Y yet. So let's uh, take that out and put it up here. So yeah, that wasn't working because beach Y didn't actually have a value yet. So now it should work. OK, so let's make our trees update with the beach. So we'll take that line, the Y value, and we'll just loop over our trees like we did with our fish. And we'll just add a random Y again. Um, so update beach. So we'll go through our trees for let I equals 0. I is less than the number of trees, I plus plus. And then we'll just say uh, trees at i, so each tree dot y to get our y value. And then I just pasted in the random value that we started with, so height over 3 to beach y. Um, so uh, that should allow the trees to move along with the beach. OK, so we can change the sky. We can change the speed of the fish. And we can change the beach size. So those are just a couple of different examples of the kinds of things that you could give the uh, user control over. So depending on what you are doing in your scene, you might want to control different stuff. You know, Depending on how complex it is, there's a few different variables that you might need to add in order to get that to work. Um, so uh, I would start just by kind of coming up with what you would want to see different. And then um, if you have an idea how to implement that, you could go ahead and start writing the code. Um, but we could also you know, meet or uh, email about what the best way to implement that is. So um, that's for assignment uh, seven. OK, so I'm going to just update my code. So I'm going to say as interface example and commit to master and push um, I won't go through uh, you know all the github steps again because you guys should have that down but if you have questions let me know um, and that is it for this video